In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to plan and prepare for your IFR departure clearance on the VATSIM network. That's coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel for episode 2 of our VATSIM for Beginners tutorial series. If you haven't seen episode 1 where we went through vPilot to listen to some HC, then check that out. I'll leave a link in the top right corner. Today in episode 2, we're going to continue the tutorial by connecting to the VATSIM network using vPilot filing a flight plan and getting our departure clearance from the VATSIM controllers at Manchester. I'd like to thank my community. We have just hit 4,000 subscribers on the channel. So thank you very much to each and every one of you. To celebrate, we've just launched a brand new Discord server, which I'd like to invite you all to join. It is new, so it's still quite empty, but I will leave a link below and hopefully you guys can come and join us there and we can get the conversation going. Right, with that said, let's dive into today's video. For my example on our VATSIM departure clearance, I'm going to be using this flight that you can see in front of me on FlightAware. It is an EasyJet flight, EasyJet 19053 from Manchester to Geneva in Switzerland. So this is just an example I've taken off flights away. From there we're going to go over to SimBrief to do the flight planning. Any of you who watch my videos know that I use SimBrief for all my flights. So as always we're going to go new flight. Easy19053 departing from Echo Golf, Charlie Charlie, and we are heading to Lima Sierra Golf Golf. Right, our alternate, Lima Foxtrot, Lima Lima. Flight date, departure time, we're going to change that to a bit later. Our airframe, as always, fly by wire A32NX. All of this we're going to leave standard. We're going to change our cruising flight level to flight level 370. And what we're interested in is in the route over here, because we're going to need this route to file our flight plan on the VATSIM network using vPilot. So we'll leave this open so we can copy and paste this route in a little bit later. Okay, there's our route there, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie to Lima Sierra Golf Golf. Okay, that looks good. Let's generate flight and we go yes. Okay, there now we have our operational flight plan which is down here, which we will use a little bit later inside the A32NX. But while we're here, what I would do is I would come down here to flight plan downloads and look for the vPilot download which is over here. So you've got a .vfp file. We download that and what we can do is we can copy and paste this into our vpilot documents file. So let's cut that and we go to our documents folder and look for vpilot files and we're going to paste that into our vpilot files folder. And there we'll be able to load our flight plan once we are inside vpilot. Okay, let's go ahead and close that up. Right, with that all done, we can head on over to the sim jump into the flight deck on the ground at Manchester and talk to some VATSIM controllers. All right, so here we are inside the sim. Let's go to our departure airport, which is gonna be Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. And uh, let's choose a gate to start at. Now a tip I have for you when flying on VATSIM at the very beginning is perhaps park your aircraft nearest to the runways. That way when you get taxi instructions from ATC, they're not gonna be so long they're going to be much shorter if you parked over here compared to perhaps if you parked all the way down here. Just until you get used to copying down taxi instructions from ATC. So I would advise perhaps parking nearest to the runways. Obviously if you have many runways at your home airport, perhaps try and check on VATSPA which is the active runway before you spawn at the gate to make sure that you at least park somewhere nearest to the runway if possible. So if today I'm just going to park somewhere here, so I'm going to choose ramp 11 and uh, set this departure. Let's choose our aircraft. We're going to be flying the A32NX of course. So fly by wire A32NX. Let's choose our EasyJet livery. That one over there. That looks good. And we can select fly. Right, so before we jump into the A32NX, I just have a few tips for everybody to make our VATSIM flying a little bit easier and a lot more fun. After all, we don't want to stress about this. We have to have fun and um, we can do that by making sure that we are well prepared. So tip number one is always have a pen and paper in front of you when flying on VATSIM. So you can write down any instructions that you are given. For example, your departure clearance It's going to contain a standard instrument departure. It's going to contain a runway perhaps a clearance limit, as well as the score code. So you want to write that down so you can read it back to the air traffic controller. 
perhaps when you're still new, you also want to write down your what you're going to say to the air traffic controller before you even key up the mic to ask for your departure clearance. Maybe you want to write it out word for word. So when you key up the mic, you're just reading it off the piece of paper and it's going to help prevent a lot of ums and ahs when you are talking to the controller, especially at the beginning when you're going to find yourself a little bit nervous. Right, then tip number two is know your aircraft. Know how to operate it confidently and competently. Obviously, we've done a lot of tutorials on the A32NX, so by now we should all be confident in flying it on VATSIM. But the reason for this is while you're flying, you're going to be asked to fly certain headings and maintain certain altitudes. So you need to be able to do that on the MCDU if you get asked to change a heading or change your altitude while you're flying. The air traffic controller could assign you a different heading or a different altitude. So you need to be able to do that. Also, further on in your VATSIM flying, perhaps you want to fly in uh, busier events one day or busier airspaces, and you could be asked to do a holding pattern. You need to be able to program that into the MCDU and be able to fly it. Also, your arrival could change on the fly. You could be given a different arrival into your destination airport. Perhaps they change the runway direction or something like that. So you need to be able to confidently do that on the MCDU and be able to fly that. You also need to be able to fly missed approaches. Perhaps the aircraft in front of you doesn't clear the runway in time and you're asked to go around. So make sure that you are able to do that. Tip number three is always use charts. Now I use Navigraph. You don't have to use Navigraph. It is a paid subscription, but it is a wonderful service. Um, there are free charts online that you can get a hold of. It doesn't matter which charts you use as long as you use some sort of charts. You're going to need it for flying on VATSIM. You're going to have to check the charts to follow the taxi instructions to and from the runways. You're going to need it to check the airport layout to know which taxi routes you're going to follow once you've been given them from the air traffic controllers and to which SIDs and stars you're going to fly, etc. So make sure you have some sort of charts available for flying on VATSIM. Then tip number four is learn your airport procedures. Like I said earlier, it's easier to fly out of a more simple, less complex airport than to fly out of an airport that's got a lot of runways, a lot of taxi routes, etc. For example, I used Manchester when I first started flying out. Two runways, very basic taxi layout, only a few parking stands and didn't take long to learn the layout, learn the airport procedures, which runways the preferred runways, which standard instrument departures they use for which aircraft. You can find that all online and just read up about it and it makes things a lot easier and it makes you know what to expect. Then, for example, if you are flying perhaps here at, um, this is Amsterdam Schiphol, it's got many runways, a lot of parking stands, many taxi routes with different directions, different intermediate holding points, and um, it's a lot to take in when you first start flying on VATSIM, especially the taxi instructions. It's going to be a lot longer than a simpler airport. So for now, stick to a smaller, more simple airport until you get used to talking on VATSIM. Tip number five is don't be afraid to ask the ATC to repeat the instructions. Simple two words, say again, and the controller will repeat themselves. If you don't hear or you don't understand the instructions you've been given, make sure you ask the controller to say again. I see a lot of pilots pretending they know what they heard and pretending they understand what they've heard and then it's just going to end up in a mistake anyway and the controller is just going to realize that you didn't hear what you said and it's just going to cause frustration for everybody. You're not going to get into trouble but obviously you want to try and maintain a more realistic experience for everybody so it's just nothing wrong with just asking for say again. And that brings me on to our last tip, tip number six which is relax and have fun. Flying on VATSIM is a hobby for both the pilots and the controllers. We're all here to have fun. It's here to enhance our flight simulation experience. And at the end of the day, it's not a job. We're all here to enjoy it. It shouldn't be stressful for you. And hopefully with these tips and the following tutorials, we can have an enjoyable VATSIM experience. Right, with that out the way, let's jump into the A32NX, set up the aircraft and get our departure clearance from Manchester. All right, so here we are inside the A32NX. Let's get some power to this aircraft. Obviously, we're not going to be flying today, so we won't put any too much emphasis on setting up the aircraft. You guys should all know how to do this by now, after watching enough of my videos. Uh, today, obviously, the emphasis is going to be on V-Pilot and getting our departure clearance. So, let's just turn on some 
lights and some screens and we will set up the MCDU very quickly and then we will listen to the ATIS and ask for our departure clearance. So let's just turn up the screen brightness over here and over here and over here and down here. Let's turn on the fly pad. Okay, some brief data not loaded. Let's get our flight plan from some brief. And there it is over there. Echo Golf Charlie Charlie to Lima Sierra Golf Golf. Alternate Lima Foxtrot Lima Lima. Okay, uh, let's load our fuel and our weight and balance. So we got fuel, uh, our block fuel for this flight is. 6,000, so that's 6,032 kilograms. So we're going to go 6.1 tons. We'll round it up. And our zero fuel weight, well, we can actually get it from Simbrief. So we go from Simbrief, and there's at 6,032. We'll load that. And our payload, do the same thing over here. We go from Simbrief. And uh, let's load that. Zero fuel weight, 57.9. That's correct. Okay, there, that started to load right now. Let's set up the MCDU real quickly. Init. Let's go init data request. Easy one nine five three. Echo Golf. Charlie Charlie. Lima Sierra Golf Golf. That's all good. Okay. Init A. Init request. Flight plan, that'll come up. What we'll do is we'll enter the departure once we've got it from our air traffic controller. Let's go to the init beef page real quick. We do our block fuel, which is zero, 6.0, zero, but we'll say 6.1. Zero fuel weight. Okay, that's got to be loaded first. Once that is passengers are loaded, then that can go in there, and then we'll finish setting up the MCDU. What we can do in the meantime is let's connect to vPilot. So we'll bring up vPilot. We'll click on, make sure you've got your settings all set up like we did in the very first episode of this tutorial. And then click on connect. We'll put in our call sign, which is easy19053. Type code A320, and we can select Airbus A320. Cell call code, you can leave it blank. Make sure connect in observer mode is not ticked. And then you can just click on connect. There we go, connected to network. Now it's going to populate all the frequencies. Okay, so here we have Echo Golf Charlie Charlie Atus. We have ground and we have tower. So for today, we want the Atus. We're going to listen to the Atus, get the information. We're going to get the runway, the current QNH, temperature, wind, everything like that. Then we're going to contact ground to get our departure clearance because there's no clearance delivery online. So we go to the next one. Before we do that, let's file our flight plan. Let's clear out this old one over here. And what you can do is you can type in your departure airport, Echo Golf, Charlie Charlie, your destination airport, Lima Sierra, Golf Golf, your alternate airport, your departure time. Your departure time doesn't have to be accurate down to the minute, it just needs to be more or less your time on route, fuel available, cruise speeds, cruise altitude, etc. Then here you're gonna type in your route. So what you can do is you can bring up some brief and just copy and paste it. So if I bring up my Simbri flight plan, I can just copy and paste the route from here without using the without putting in the SID and star. So copy and you can paste it in there. Remarks, what I would do when you're still new is put new pilots in there. Air traffic controllers can see these remarks and they will know you're a new pilot and they'll probably give you a little bit more patience when it comes to your communications. Voice. If you're going to be talking, sending and receiving invoice, receive voice only or text only, tick whichever box is appropriate. Uh, for us, we're going to do voice, send and receive. Obviously, that's the whole point of flying on VATSIM. Now, I wouldn't do any of this manually. Like I showed you earlier, copying your flight plan to your vPilot files in your documents folder. What you can do is you can go... Match the traffic run at 984 just past sun by climbing to final cruise altitude of 350. 
you can load flight plan double click on the appropriate one which is echo golf charlie charlie lima sierra golf golf and it populates everything for you you don't have to fill anything in manually there you have your departure time obviously you're going to change that depending on the time that you're going to be departing time on route fuel available cruise speed cruise altitude and there's the routes exactly the same as it was and then you can go file flight plan then the ATC are going to have a look at that. They're going to make sure everything's correct in your flight plan. They're going to give you the standard instrument departure according to the first waypoint on your flight plan. As we saw there, we had a sandbar as our first waypoint. So we're going to expect a sandbar departure. We'll have a look at that a little bit later on the charts. Right now, let's connect to the ATIS, which is 121.975, and have a listen to that. So if we tune one two one nine seven five on the standby and change it to the active. Two three right transition level flight level six five surface wind variable four knots visibility ten kilometers or more view at one thousand four hundred feet temperature plus one one dew point plus nine QNH nine nine seven hectopascal threshold QFE nine eight eight hectopascal acknowledge receipt of information India and. Advise aircraft type on first contact. Okay, so we have information India. We have runway news two three right. Manchester information India. Time one two five zero Zulu. Runway in use two three right. Transition level flight level six five. And we have QNH Perfect. of nine and nine seven. Variable four knots. Visibility ten kilometers or more. Few at one thousand four hundred feet. Temperature plus. Okay, I'm just going to turn that off for now. Obviously, you can listen to that a few times over if you want, or you can just read it in words on the screen like I did there. So what we want is information India, QNH 9997, runway 23 right. Okay, with that out of the way, what we can do is we can start planning our initial call to ATC when we ask for declarance. So now I always do it in the same order of who we are, what we are, where we are, what we have, and what we want. So who we are is our call sign, EZ1953. What we are is our aircraft type, Airbus A320. Where we are is our stand number, stand 11. What we have is the ATIS Information India and our QNH of 9997. And what we want is our departure clearance to Geneva. So I always use the same order when I call for clearance. I will call them up with a call sign, aircraft type, where we are, which is our stand number, give them the ATIS information that we've listened to it at the Q&H, and obviously uh, ask for our departure clearance. So it's going to go something like this. It's going to go uh, Manchester Ground, good afternoon, EZ19053, Airbus A320, stand 11, Information India, Q&H 9997, request departure clearance to Geneva. And then we're going to expect back a departure clearance, which is going to contain the departing runway, which we already know is 23 right. It's going to contain a SID, which we can plan already, knowing where we're going. So in our example, we're going to Sandbar, so we can accept a SID that's going to Sandbar. So if we bring up our charts before we even ask for departure clearance, uh, let me bring up Navigraph here quickly. And we go to Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, and we go check out the charts. Let's check out the standard instrument departure charts. Uh, we're looking for a Sandbar. Here they are here. Sandbar 1 Romeo, Sandbar 1 Yankee. So we got Sandbar 1 Romeo, 2, 3 right, and we got Sandbar 1 Yankee, 2, 3 left. It's going to Sandbar. So we already know we're departing off 2, 3 right. So I'm 99% sure that we're going to get a Sandbar 1 Romeo departure. So, so ATC is probably going to tell us if we cleared to Geneva, Sandbar 1 Romeo departure. I'm just going to write that down on my paper. And he's going to give us a squawk code, which we must input into our transponder so they can see us on radar. So based on that information, I already know that he's going to tell us two, three rights. Probably going to tell us Sandbar 1 Romeo departure. And then he's going to give us a squawk code, which I'm quickly going to jot down on my piece of paper. And then I'm going to read it back. So with that in mind, I think we're ready to ask for our departure clearance. I think they're still loading. Our passenger still being loaded. So that's not almost ready but what we can do so long is tune in manchester ground which let's bring up v pilot again and get our frequency 
it is one two one decimal eight five zero. So it's one two one decimal eight five zero. And hold golf one. Uh, hold golf one. I think we could take some fifty. That's what we were at last time. Yeah, in that case, yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Let's have a look what's going on outside. Ground scale is five hundred whiskey. Stand twenty five brief push and stop. Scale is five hundred yes whiskey. What is your number three for push hold position? Hold position number three. Scale is five hundred whiskey. A little bit busy this afternoon. Wrong, easy six four Foxtrot Kilo requesting taxi. Easy six four Foxtrot Kilo taxi holding point QDS one via Lima, Papa Kilo and Juliet. Okay, there we go. Boarding completed. So let's ask for our departure clearance. Charlie five nine Juliet whiskey. Charlie five nine Juliet whiskey. Stand two five. Press and start to proceed face east. Push that through face that you scale with one one Thank you, sir. Thank you. Manchester Ground, good afternoon. Easy 1953, Airbus A320. Stand 11, one, one. Information India, QNH 9907. Request uh, departure clearance to Geneva. Easy 1953, Manchester Ground, hello to okay, Geneva. Sandra 1 Romeo, departure squawk 5017. Kids Geneva, Sandba 1 Romeo departure, squawk 5017, easy 1953. Easy 1953, correct. All right, and that was your departure clearance. As I said, we already expected Sandba 1 Romeo departure, and so that's what he gave us, so it was easy to read back, and he gave us a squawk code of 5017, which we are going to immediately put in our transponder over here, because I've got a habit of always f forgetting that. Eckland 1 Romeo departure, squawk 7645. Okay, let me just switch that off for now. Okay, now that we have that, 5017, we have QNH of 9907, we can stick that in there. And then we can go back and finish up setting up the MCDU. So, flight plan, departure is going to be 23 right, and it's going to be the Sanba 1 Romeo departure. Insert that. That all looks good. Let's clear out the discontinuity there. And we can finish with the performance. So it's going to be flaps 2. And here's our V speeds V1, 126, V rotate 127, and V2, 131. And that is pretty much us set up and ready to go. Obviously, if we we're going to be flying today, we would have set everything up properly. We would have had the APU started up. We would have checked the departure and done all of this. But because we're not flying today, I'm going to leave it right there. I guarantee you, if this is the first time asking for departure clearance on VATSIM, your heart is probably going to be beating out of your chest right now. But it's progress. That's how we start. As you can see, it's not too difficult once we know what to expect and if we plan correctly and prepare ourselves with our pen and paper, our charts, and just like taking a deep breath, asking for clearance, talking nice and slowly. There's not much to it. I hope you enjoyed this first video or second episode and uh, first time asking for departure clearance on VATSIM. Just remember to take it easy, relax, ask for help if you need it and make sure that you prepare everything that's required. It's not too difficult. In episode three, we're going to take it a step further. We're going to ask for another departure clearance, but this time we're actually going to do a startup and a pushback. We're going to taxi to the runway and we will do a departure all on VATSIM. As always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, thanks very much for watching. Please leave a like. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And make sure you join us in episode Ryan 3. Ryanair 19 Charlie Foxtrot, stand 5-2, push and start the proof face east. Push proof face east, Ryanair 19 Charlie Fox. Thanks very much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.